Hello, this is Mr. Young, and welcome to lecture number one on our unit on the cell. And today we're going to be discussing the history of the cell and the development of the cell theory. But, um, the first slide that I have is showing you five different scientists that had um, that gave some contributions to the development of the cell theory and, and the, the slides to come will talk about each one of these scientists and, and their contribution in a little bit more detail. But the five scientists are Robert Hooke and Anton von Leeuwenhoek, Matthias Schleiden, Theodore Schwann, and finally Rudolf Virchow. Now there were many other scientists that did you know, play a part in the development of the cell theory, but these are kind of the five main scientists that we want you to know for this class. So the first one we're going to deal with will be Robert Hooke. And, and Robert Hooke um, had a very primitive microscope, and you can kind of see what Hooke's microscope looks like over on uh, this side. And, and you can see it looks much different than what our microscopes you know, look like today, the ones that we use in our biology class. But what he was looking at is a slice of cork. So he took a very thin slice, put it under his microscope, and if you look at the bottom, this is kind of what he ended up viewing. He kind of saw that they had these sort of rectangular, box-shaped sort of cells that, that he kind of referred to as being small compartments. And with that being said, he was going to be the scientist that kind of coined the term cell because he just kind of thought that these things maybe look like a prison cell or something like that. But these little tiny boxes he referred to as cells. The next scientist, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, he also had a, a very primitive microscope. And, and you can see his looked much different than Robert Hooke's. And, and you know, you can see some of the, the basic parts of his microscope. You know, this part I'm circling right here is where his lens was. And this part here is where he could focus, you know, adjust the focus for whatever um, specimen he was looking at. Now, von Leeuwenhoek looked at many different things under his microscope. One of the things that he did is he looked at a sample of water. Just took a drop of water, put it on his microscope, and he noticed that there were some lot of tiny little organisms that were swimming around. Really wasn't sure what those organisms were, so he just kind of coined the term uh, animacules is what he referred to them as. He also looked at blood and he saw that blood was just more than a red liquid. That blood was actually made up of some different kinds of cells that he was able to see under his microscope. And then finally, he took a sample from his teeth and looked at it under the microscope and he saw some very small um, organisms that later were to be or later were found to be bacteria. So as you can see, von Leeuwenhoek found many different kinds of organisms under his microscope. The next scientist, Matthias Schleiden, was uh, he was a botanist, and so of course botanists are going to study plants. And what he did is he looked at various plants and their parts underneath a microscope and, and looked at some of their tissues and various structures and found out that all plants and their parts will be made up of cells. So, you know, if I, I just put a basic plant over here, you know, I'm circling a leaf and drawing on the stem of the plant and then the other basic part, of course, of the plant will be the root. And, and he looked at all those things and saw that no matter what, the part of the plant was that he was looking at, it was in fact going to be made up of cells. Now the next scientist, Theodore Schwann, was heavily influenced by the work of Matthias Schleiden. Now both Schleiden and Schwann were German scientists, so they were very familiar with each other's work. Um, Schwann was uh, studied histology, which was dealing with the structures of plant and animal tissues. So he, he not only, you know, he was also looking at plant parts just like Schleiden was as well. Now I, I put a graphic on the bottom that shows you some of the 
the various levels of organization. So on the on the left hand side, all these are going to be the different some different kinds of cells. But what Schwann was really dealing with was this part, kind of the second part, where the tissues. So if you remember our level of organization, you know we have cells and groups of cell make tissues and groups of tissues make organs and groups of organs make an organ system and then a group of organ systems of course makes up an organism but this is kind of where Schwann concentrated his area was studying these tissues but they are still groups of cells but from his work he ended up stating that all animals and their parts will be made up of cells so a very important contribution to the development of the cell theory the last scientist we'll discuss is Rudolf Virchow, and Rudolf Virchow um, ended up stating that through his work that all cells are going to come from pre-existing cells. And this is a little bit different notion than what was believed before this time, because a lot of people down here believed in the theory of spontaneous generation. Now right before we discussed or when we were discussing our unit on evolution we made some references to the theory of spontaneous generation which of course meant that um, people believe that living things came from non-living matter and Verkau through his work disproved that theory or one of the many scientists that ended up disproving that theory but he did it more on a cellular level. Now what he was dealing with is he discovered that disease cells came from healthy cells that just came from normal tissue and certain things. So even though they were diseased and there was things that were wrong with them, they still did end up coming from a cell. So even that it was still a cell, but it came from another cell. The work of all of these scientists and as I mentioned before, the work of many others that we didn't cover ended up forming the development of the cell theory. And I listed all three parts of the cell theory. Uh, you know, you can see part number one where all living things are made up of one or more cells. And, you know, we discussed the scientists that, that dealt with finding all the cell parts, whether it's a plant or animal, that they were be made of cells. We're in the next lecture, we're going to discuss this part um, on the different kinds of cells and, and the organisms that are going to be, you know, made up of one cell or, or the ones that will be made up of many cells. You know, part two of the cell theory, the cells are the basic unit of structure and function. This is what we'll deal with in lecture number three, where we're going to look at the structure and the function of what happens within cells. And then lastly, part three, that cells only come from pre-existing cells. So this was the part that we just kind of covered with the work of Rudolf Virchow. So hopefully you learned a little bit about the history of the cell and the modern day cell theory. Hope it made sense to you. Thanks.